Okay, Mike. Um, yeah, I've been fielding a lot of questions about high speed sync. A lot. And a bunch of people recently asked, Did I do a video on high speed sync flash photography? I was like, okay. Let's first talk about things that won't work for high speed sync flash photography. And then let's talk about what will, what it is, and. You know, let's just make it really simple. Let's get the nitty gritty of high speed sync. Um, like all the pocket wizard triggers and the flash Q triggers, you notice there's only one contact pin on the bottom of uh, those triggers, right? That means that is just a dumb fire only command. Doesn't matter if it's radio or uh, whether it's via cable. However, m there's basically no cables. There are some that are just single center pin uh, trip connect. You're never going to get high speed sync out of that unless it's a uh, leaf shutter. Most cameras are obviously not leaf shutter. Fuji, Nikon, well I mean Fuji's regular cameras, not their X100T and X70. So those are center pin trip only. You're not going to get any high speed sync out of that unless it's a leaf shutter camera. So the pocket wizards, the flash cue triggers, those are just dumb fire commands. It's just telling the uh, flash to fire. Um, high speed sync, very important, is very precise timing of the focal plane shutter and it is pulsed light. This is also the reason why speed lights and flashes lose power. They don't technically lose power, but you actually can't drop an enormous amount of light when you're pulsing it. When you do high speed sync flash photography, you can't see it, but the speed light is brrr, is pulsing light really fast. Um, there's a link below I'd like to take you to on Strobus, and it'll actually uh, tell you uh, the power differences and the uh, of uh, like T1 times, and it'll tell you about uh, leaf shutters, and uh, it'll go over some of the benefits of uh, inbuilt ND filter and the uh, leaf shutter, like on the X100 series camera. Uh, the power limitation, however, doesn't exist with a leaf sh a leaf shutter up to one one thousandth of a second. Um, thereby making leaf cameras effectively more powerful for uh, wide open shooting and uh, further distance at uh, fast shutter speeds uh, for subject elimination. Uh, the issue with uh, speed lights are is that most all of them have a T1 time, meaning uh, half power or up to a full power, but definitely full power. Full power is that uh, they don't have a T1 time. Um, of a shorter period than one one thousandth of a second. So if you take your uh, Fuji X100 series camera and you take it to two thousandths or four thousandths, then what you're doing is if, say, you're dropping a, a, full, uh, a full load of light from your speed light at full power, you're actually cutting it because the simple analogy is you're trying to pass a horse of light because the flash pulse is one one thousandth of a second but your shutter duration is one four thousandth of a second. So you can do high speed sync flash photography with a leaf shutter at any shutter speed, but at full power, your T1 time increases. Okay, So you can't shoot wide open at, uh, say, 4,000th of a second and still have that full burst of light. Um, um, the important things for using high-speed sync flash photography is obviously uh, shooting wide open uh, for your shallow depth of field. Three things primarily. The second is uh, shooting a strong uh, backlit uh, shallow depth of field with uh, high shutter speeds uh, to quench ambient illumination. This is also important like on the X100 series that have a drop-in three-stop ND filter. You just hit a button and an actual physical filter drops in on the inside of the camera. That's a three-stop ND filter. Um, Number three and last basic main use for high-speed sync is action flash photography to uh, freeze your subject motion. Uh, normal exposure, when you're talking about exposure, obviously, is gain and time. The gain and uh, being your aperture and time, obviously, being your shutter speed. Whereas the flash is a bullet, so up to one one-thousandth of a second, you know, even at full power or any other power, you don't have to worry about that. Your uh, flash uh, illumination is going to make its way. Uh, through regardless of what your shutter speed is. People actually will always ask me that question. It's like, well, I'm just doing, I'm shooting in like really low light, but I've changed my shutter speed from uh, on a 1 250th of a second down to, um, say, uh, up from 1 60th of a second up to uh, 1 250th, but nothing changed. And that's because the flash duration is getting through so fast when you change your shutter speed, it doesn't really change anything. So yeah, normal exposure is, think of it as like a turtle as opposed to a speed light exposure, or flash, or strobe, uh, strobe uh, exposure, or like a bullet. Basically, no matter what your shutter speed is, the uh, flash of the studio strobe is going to make its way 
uh, to your sensor uh, like a bullet is. Um, X100S or X100T or the new X100F that's coming out. So the camera actually has a built-in three-stop ND filter, making uh, crushing the ambient illumination much, much better. That's the way if you want to shoot uh, at f2 for example and uh, drop or quench or crush your ambient illumination and raise your subject illumination since you're going to be doing high-speed sync photography you could shoot at say um, f2 at uh, you know 1 1,000th to 1 2,000th of a second crush your ambient illumination uh, turn on the ND filter which uh, is a three-stop ND filter built into the X100 series camera and then raise your subject illumination so you can make really crappy 3 p.m. light for example look like it's 8 p.m. light um, like I said most speed lights are 1 1,000th of a second duration at full blast that's their T1 time uh, this is why a high-speed sync above 1,000th of a second on the shutter decreases the actual exposure if you're shooting a full blast of light on your subject um, what most people don't realize is that when it comes to shutter speed, everything up to 1 1,000th of a second doesn't change exposure on your subject illumination, not as far as regarding your ambient illumination, but regarding your speed light illumination. Like these uh, studio strobes behind me, I uh, actually uh, exclusively use uh, Pulse Buff because they're the absolute best and best value uh, for the money. absolutely love them for many, many ways, but they are IGBT-controlled uh, studio strobes, which means I have absolutely no high-speed sync capability with them unless I'm using a leaf shutter camera. It's a no-go on these for absolutely everything other than a leaf shutter camera, which is iris controlled instead of uh, a, a first curtain and a second curtain uh, focal plane shutter. So you're actually using iris controlled uh, shutter on uh, your leaf shutter uh, camera like the X100 series or some of the Hasselblads or even a couple of uh, Sony's uh, cameras, uh, the really expensive one, the RX1R, which is like nearly 4000 bucks. I think that's an leaf shutter camera. Um, so I, I actually can use those um, on uh, the X100 series. There's a famous photographer down in Australia. They use the speed lights and studio strobes of this X100 series uh, for uh, crushing the ambient illumination in combination with the three-stop built-in ND filter, and also in combination with um, you know, studio strobes or speed lights that it uses. The other important thing, too, is that all high-speed sync flash photography is pulsed light. Like I said, when you're using pulsed light, you have a significant amount less power because you can't drop an enormous amount of light and pulse it very rapidly like that. So your actual power levels drop a lot. But when you're talking about high-speed sync photography on a leaf shutter, you're not using pulsed light, and that is a huge boon. So when you're doing high-speed sync photography, say with an Einstein 640 watt second, which is what this is, I've got like four of them, one of them behind me here. Uh, the 640 watt is as effective as a 2,000 watt second. I mean, that's some serious damn power. A 2,000 watt second uh, monoblock unit when you're using a leaf shutter. That means that you could have your subject pretty damn far out there, and you could drop some hardcore light. Uh, when you're using a leaf shutter. So that's a serious advantage for people to think, well, I know I could do high-speed sync flash photography with uh, my leaf shutter. It's not only that, it makes the effective capabilities of your speed light as opposed to your Nikon or your Fuji, which also do high-speed sync photography, but they use pulse light. When you're not using pulse light, then you have a lot more light uh, being able to be dropped on your sensor at uh, 1 1,000th or 1 2,000th or 1, even though the T1 times are 1 1,000th a second on it. It varies on this one. I forget the exact numbers on the 640 watt seconds, what the T1 time on this one is. I think it's well, one third. I can't remember offhand. But you have a lot more uh, power being able to drop on your sensor uh, using a leaf shutter camera. So that's the other major advantage of a leaf shutter, not just the fact that you can use that. Well, the third advantage also is that people say, well, what kind of uh, strobe or speed light can I use? with the Fuji X100 series or any other leaf shutter? The answer is anything and everything. There's no special timing required. This is the one time where a center pin trip, like a pocket wizard or flash cue trigger, will let you do high-speed sync photography. It's just sending a pulse command to fire, but that's all a leaf shutter needs. Everything else, you see all these multiple pin connections on the hot shoe on top of the Fuji or your Nikon or your Canon? All of those are communication portals to communicate with your speed light, which is very precise timing and pulsed illumination. 
That's how these things, that's the only way they can perform high-speed sync photography with a first curtain and a second curtain going across the focal plane. The focal plane shutters, that's why you can't do high-speed sync with a center pin trip trigger like a flash cue trigger or a pocket wizard. But you can with a leaf shutter. So that's another major advantage. That's why you could use a cheap-ass little flash cue trigger on a Fuji X100 and do high-speed sync photography at 1 4,000, 1 2,000, 1 1,000th of a second. That in combination with the drop-in 3-stop ND filter means you could do some serious ambient crushing um, uh, photography and drop in just some dinky light. Even the little built-in uh, uh, flash on the X100S and T and F series is more than enough. Um, to give you sufficient subject illumination. People look at those little dinky flashes, and of course they are dinky and pretty useless, but with a leaf shutter, they're not useless. They're actually quite potent. So the very, very simple way of thinking about it is that using a leaf shutter also lets you have much more power and control and distance capability on using a speed light or a studio strobe with a leaf shutter than anything close. Because I get those questions all the time People uh, from people, too. They'll say, why is it when I'm using high-speed sync photography with my EFX 500 Speedlight, which is new to Fujifilm, and uh, with the X-T2, that I can't get the distance? It's like the power has dropped off significantly, and it's like, that's exactly right. In high-speed sync flash photography with Nikon, which they call it Auto FP, Fuji calls it that too, actually, you're using pulse light, and you can't drop a serious amount of light. The capacitors can't handle it, is the short answer to that. You can't fire off a, uh, you know, a charge of uh, power to the xenon flash tube and then immediately fire off another one. It takes a certain amount of time for those caps or capacitors to recharge. That's why high-speed sync flash photography with a focal plane camera, you know, your power fall off goes whoo, right into the basement. I mean, it's significantly less. It depends on the unit, but uh, about 60% uh, less. Now people are like, oh, something's wrong with my camera and my flash. There's a lot less parts. So I guess you're in high-speed sync photography you're using pulse light. But people never see that. The pulses are so fast, it just looks like boom. But that's not what's happening. You're actually getting a pulse of uh, multiple uh, flashes of light from the speed light to cover the moving slit over the focal plane shutter. To be able to cover that is... But with iris or aperture controlled uh, high-speed sync photography on a uh, leaf shutter, you don't have that problem. You can just fire off a huge burst of light, and that gives you a lot more control. It makes your speed light more powerful. I mean, obviously, speed light doesn't become more powerful, but it effectively makes it more powerful. So I hope that cleared up all the aspects of high-speed sync photography. Just remember that HSS on any focal plane camera, Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, they're regular cameras. Um, that is extremely precise timing light, and it is also always pulsed light. Timing and pulse, that's why center pin trip uh, triggers cannot do HSS with normal, like X-T2, regular Nikon cameras, regular Canon cameras, uh, Sony's the A7R2, etc., etc., you can't pin tax. So, I hope I cleared that up without being too verbose, i.e. logo maki. Thanks for watching, and catch you later. If you like this video, and drop me a buck or two. Tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy, I just like to help, believe it or not. Okay? Thanks. Bye.